on the streets where time has died. The golden tree you never tried in times of old, in days gone by. My mother was probably the only person in my hometown who ever uttered the words, manners make of man. Fort Lauderdale was where people went to church in Bermuda shorts and ate on TV trays in front of the television. But in my house, my mother, father, sister, and I sat down to a formal dinner every evening. I had to hold my mother's chair when she sat. We didn't start eating until she, the lady of the house, lifted her fork. My mother taught my sister and me manners for everything. And to me, most of them were silly and pointless. They were a cover for the craziness in my family. Eating at your house is weird, my friend John once told me. <laughs> when John was over, I saw my family through his eyes. My father and sister ate anxiously, hoping this time a fight wouldn't break out. I sat in sullen silence, waiting for someone to set me off. My mother sipped scotch, smoked cigarettes, and picked at her food. My mother was well-read and had a penetrating intelligence. Arguing religion and politics with her could be fun, but she changed when she drank. She, be she became irritable, demanding, and convinced of the absolute rightness of everything she said. One night, she remarked that my small Catholic high school should be able to beat the two large Fort Lauderdale public high schools in football. She really knew nothing about football. My father glared at me. Don't do it. Don't do it, his eyes said. But I couldn't help myself. The public schools have four times as many students as we have, I said, my voice rising. How on earth could we beat them? Well, your team is smaller and should be motivated to play harder, she said. <laughs> the argument escalated, and eventually I stalked from the room. On one of my first dates, my mother insisted that I wear a suit. You can't be serious. Fort, this is Fort Lauderdale. People go on dates in bathing suits. <laughs> no, it's rude and disrespectful not to dress properly. I won't do it. Then you don't get the car keys. She thought she'd won, but I took off the coat and tie as soon as I got in the car. My date did, did a double take when she saw me and gave me a wry smile when I picked her up, and I ended up playing miniature golf in my dress shirt and pants. My leather dress shoes were slippery on the astro turf. <laughs> I played baseball in high school. One evening at dinner after a game, which my parents had for once attended, my father patted me on the back for a late inning bases loaded double. But you didn't do as well as you could have, my mother chimed in, raising her glass to her lips. What do you mean? You came to bat that first time with runners on the bases and you struck out. Well, yeah, but I knocked in three runs in the seventh inning. Well, your team lost the game and probably would have, would have won if you had, you have no idea how hard it is to hit a baseball. <laughs> it can't be that hard, everybody does it. <laughs> Once again, I raged and stormed off to my room. My mother's alcoholism followed me to college, although I didn't know it. After college, I gravitated to jobs. Sorry, oops. Sophomore year, I had my first girlfriend, Pat. I told her I was having a hard time with a particular chapter in biology class. She took my biology book home, read the chapter, and the next day explained it to me. <laughs> I felt as if I'd been sent an angel. Late one night, Pat and I were in the park making out. Just up over the levee, we could hear the thrush of the river. She put her lips to my ear and said, I love you. I was silent for a long minute. I knew what I should say, but I didn't say anything because I was afraid. I was afraid that if I did, in the end, I, I'd disappoint her. Perhaps the way I was constantly, constantly disappointing my mother. I remember looking in my dorm room mirror not long after and wondering, what the fuck's wrong with me? <laughs> after college, I gravitated to jobs that paid the rent and kept the expectations of me low. I set stanchions in a mobile home factory in Indiana, waited tables in New Orleans and St. Louis, taught old ladies how to drive in San Diego. I remember a friend calling me on the phone. He said he had decided to say yes to life. My 30th birthday came and went, and I was still saying maybe. In my mid-30s, I managed to land a professional job. Taking, taking technical information and turning it into something others could read and understand. Turned out I was good at it. At about the same time, I landed a wife, a fine one too. I think she married me less for who I was than for who she hoped I would become. We had a son. 
My wife's continuing complaint was that I was a decent father to our son, but a lousy husband. We were supposed to be life partners, but I really wasn't there for her. Get into therapy, she pleaded, and figure it out. I did, and in therapy I learned what broke inside me a long time ago. When I was little, with my mother's first few sips of scotch, she changed from a soft mother to a brittle one. To the child me, it felt like a withholding of love. Not knowing which mother would be there, I withdrew. If I didn't engage, I wouldn't get hurt. But this extended into and compromised my adult relationships. Then one day, my whole life changed. I drove to my bank, withdrew $10,000 in cash, a million dollars to my wife and me at the time, and handed it to two complete strangers. I got scammed. The transaction was supposed to net $10,000, not lose it. I got suckered because I was desperate to affirm to my wife my worth as a husband and to counter the inadequacy I felt all my life. In the aftermath, word, words can't describe my self-loathing or my wife's fury. If it hadn't been for our son, she would have divorced me on the spot. During those days, I'd leave my office and walk to the parking garage next door, sit in my car and cry. I cried that I'd been such a shitty husband. I cried that by losing all that money, I'd given away the second child we, child we've been talking about having. Although an unbeliever all of my adult life, I cried to God for help. To get out of the house on Saturday mornings, I began attending Torah study at the nearby synagogue. I liked it and it felt right. I began to pray. I didn't know how, but I prayed. It felt, like, it felt like the closing of a chasm that had opened in me during my childhood. Ten years ago, the day before our son's bar mitzvah, I converted to Judaism. Slowly, my wife and I have healed. I try to do, I try to do things a real husband does, foregoing a baseball game in the evening to take a walk with her, or making quiet time for the two of us on a Sunday afternoon. I'm still a work in progress, but it's, but it's like manners. You do them, and you do them enough, and in time they become who you are.